Ah, oh, got it finally. Jeez, this was like um like a T like a T section plastic joiner thingy here. Where all the cables came together. Uh, this took me an hour to get off actually. But now we've got it, and we can now move on. Bell will wash us. I've just realized we've never replaced this breaker here for a fuse. I've got the fuse here, the fuse holder, but we never replaced it. I guess once it's working, you forget about it and leave it as it is. So there's a 10 amp, a 20 amp breaker in here instead of a instead of a 10 amp fuse. Well, this all needs to be disconnected. As well as in here, the incoming circuit breakers. We need to disconnect all the incoming solar. And I think it's, um, it's best we are doing it now, while it's dark outside. <laughs> yeah, it's another late night show. Three days we have now to get this all done. Then I need to go back to work. It will be so much work. Okay, let's get started and take this all off here. So we now have the first post mounted here. M10 screw at the top and M6 down here. And then 600 millimeter from here will be the next one. 600 from here will be the next one and so on until the end where we have a 500 millimeter panel because the wall is only 2950 so 2.9 meters okay so i have now disconnected our combiner box here for the east roof and i've just taken off the main positive and main negative cable here it's the easiest thing we're going to isolate all the fuses here so we don't have power here on these two cables tomorrow. And I will put the cover back on, take out all the fuses, leave this one off. And um, then we've got the 150 volts in here, but it is safe until tomorrow night. And this is flexible enough so I can, I can um, continue mounting my, my panels and my posts and everything here. And this should be, this should be sufficient. And I've done the same with the west roof. There are these two cables here and this goes in the conduit and the combiner box is there, up there at the roof and it will stay there. While this one here is going onto the panel. Because, well, this is so close to the panels. They are just above the roof here. This is like 30 centimeters above where the panels are. Okay, so DC input is completely disconnected from here. I've already turned off the DC out from the solar charge controllers. So I guess the next thing would be to disconnect the battery. But um, the inverter is still running from it. And we are on 40% state of charge of the battery. So the battery won't get any charge tomorrow. 43% we are. I'm not sure if we can get this all done on the weekend now. It will be very, very tight. Today is Thursday evening and I've just started after coming home from work today mounting this post and we probably can mount another one here and then tomorrow we have to disconnect the um, bus bars here and the battery, take the battery cables all out, disconnect the inverter and then I have to run an extension cable from the house to the pool pump because the pool pump still needs power. <laughs> but one step after another. I don't see the whole project, I just see the next step. Otherwise you're getting mad. 
Okay, I would say we are mounting the next post and then we are done for today. Ah, I have to isolate my solar up there as well because otherwise we've got power on these two cables, which we certainly don't want. But we have to renew this cable here as well. Uh, this is a two times four millimeter cable and it will be a two times 16 millimeter cable. So four times as thick because eventually we will have this all populated here, including a SPD um, surge protection device. But for now, this is all isolated. Hopefully nobody comes in the garage during the night and turns this back on, right? Now I'll isolate the cables anyway with a little bit of... Okay. Everything is now isolated here. Well, it's isolated anyway, so there's no chance there's any power on here. But this is another reason I like to fuse positive and negative here of the solar panels, because you can really isolate both lines and you've got no power anywhere anymore. Because people have comments under my videos and said, why do you use two fuses for your solar string? Well, that's just me. I just don't like to only open a circuit. I want to isolate. Positive, negative. Done. So, replace the breaker with the fuse now. And put the fuse in there as well. And there we go. So they're all the same now. This is done. And we can close the lid again here. I don't know where I put the sticker here on the top and on the other combiner it's on the bottom. How inconsistent. I need to change that. So if you now look in the Victron VIM, you won't see the solar charge controllers anymore. They are gone because they are now disconnected, isolated and not talking to the system anymore. Well, it's only discharging for the moment. Six hundred. They're just far too long, so I need to cut them down. Like these ones here. I I I don't I hate this. Yeah, that's much better. It's the correct length. And now M10 at the top. It's too hot on my hands. Bombenfest. Oh, almost a five. Okay, my friends, I think that's it for tonight. We've got um, two posts mounted and bolted into the frame of the garage. This is all part of the structure now. Um, question is, if I put the panel on here, should I put some insulation in between? Because this is the metal outside of the garage. We usually don't have sun on here, but just in the morning, maybe for half an hour, 45 minutes, when the sun comes over the other shed. It will definitely help prevent the heat from coming in, but it also prevents the air from circulating. Because if these panels, if these front panels here heat up, the air can actually circulate behind it and can come out of the top so if I put insulation material in there, there will be no circulation. So I'm torn apart a bit between, yes, isolating, 
or not isolating. I mean, most of the time we wouldn't need the insulation. Nah, I don't think I put insulation in there. If it really gets hot, I can always unscrew the front panels here and put something in between or get it in from underneath. <sighs> yeah, we have, I can hardly see it. This is probably how the panel will be then. So we've got space from underneath and can push some insulation in between. Okay guys, I will go inside now and will edit this video here because I want to be a little bit more up to date now. I will ask a lot of questions maybe like the insulation one here. And I know you guys have all the awesome and great ideas all the time. So I would like to take them on board here and um, realize them as much as I think they are worth realizing. So tomorrow Friday will be a big day because we will we will take off the electrical cabinet here and then we have to move this post the next 600 yeah and then we keep going until we are at the end so battery disconnecting tomorrow and i'm not sure if i can temporarily connect the solar panels again to our solar here with the charge controllers then maybe i can build an extension i don't know yet i don't know <laughs> probably not probably i'll leave it all offline it's too much mucking around with cables and adapters and I just leave it offline for the time being and and use the Blue Eddy here for our power supply. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here. Thanks for all your donations, of course. And we shall see us again tomorrow. Day one of building the power wall. There we go, guys. First step is done. <laughs> Okay, as always, thanks for watching guys. See you then. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye All right, good night Blue Eddie